This is my cat, he's called Graham. And I thought take the chance to talk about cats and predation of birds. There are about 7.5 million cats in the UK and they do kill about 100 million birds each year. This is a lot, but I want to explain why the decline of songbirds in the UK is not really due to the cat, it's the scapegoat. I should point out that in locations where um, mammal predators don't belong, New Zealand, offshore islands, cats, rats, etc., introduced predators have devastated wildlife. Now, Graham's what you call a short hair, I think thick hair is a better description, is um, they're basically a bred for farms for being outside and certainly Graham loves to spend most of his time out of doors in all sorts of weather. Cats actually roughly two thirds of what they take are mammals, small mammals, and this again is what they were used for around farms. About a quarter of what they take are birds, the rest are things like um, frogs and reptiles, and they do think where um, a housing estate backs onto heathland they can um, decimate common lizards. What I want to talk about is how there's other factors have caused a decline in our songbirds in the UK. Loss of habitat, home improvements to um, fascia boards on guttering, so there's places where birds can't nest, for example, and also our overuse of pesticides and herbicides in the garden setting. Now, as I mentioned, cats do take a lot, kill a lot of birds, but in the typical situation with a predator, well, they does look very sweet, is with predators is in the natural balance of things, they take the surplus. So for example, a blackbird, to keep the population going, basically the, 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 the male and the female need to be replaced in their lifetime as I say, the breeding birds in that location, and you have a stable population, but of course, populations can increase or decrease. Where you can reduce the impact of your cat, I'm gonna explain in a moment about um, to make your garden much better, much safer for the wildlife. But what's really important as well is to have a well-fed cat. Graham's well-fed, he actually, roams around half the street going from house to house to be fed but also i give him really good food the latest evidence is if they've got a good quality cat food with a lot of meat they're far less likely to go off hunting for extra food and my argument is probably it's no different from us if you get given them a food you don't really like you're going to be looking elsewhere so what I want to do now is talk about the real issues with the um, loss of our songbirds. But just to stress, it's really important. Um, we need control on things like cats and introduce things like rats in places like New Zealand and offshore islands. You can really help by um, donating to, um, for example, things like rat eradication programs in these areas and here ah, here he is his graham is um he has some good quality cat food he has some dry food as well but he has a good quality cat food so when he's outside i occasionally see him um, catching a mouse for example but um most times he's just quite interested in just wandering around and watching the birds Now Graham's looking out the back, he's got his cat flap, he can come in and out whenever he likes. And he spends a lot of time outdoors in all sorts of weather, even the cold. And actually here he goes, popping out through the cat flap. He's quite a big cat, he needs to squeeze through, as I said, he's a well-fed cat. As he does what, she's very interested in all the birds. The birds have been feeding on the bird feeder, you can see, obviously you can't get them. And um, 
the sorts of birds which hang around on the ground are the robins, the house sparrows, the blackbirds and the dunnocks. They are all, all doing fine in my garden, although I have Graham, my cat in the garden and several others visit as well. So what I want to talk about now is the features of your garden which helps your garden birds and reduces the risk of predation from cats like Graham. Now sitting in my back garden, there's been various birds calling and singing. I've been hearing a dunnet singing and a robin singing. I'm probably talking some future travel posts about identifying our British birds by their song. But I said in this travel post I want to talk about our garden birds and how to help them to um, prevent declines. Now the last few days it's been very cold, minus six to minus seven, and that's when the bird feeders have been so important. Is, and birds are well adapted to the cold, they have feathers, and although we associate feathers with flight, do remember they first evolved in some of the smaller uh, dinosaur-like reptiles as they became warm-blooded. The feathers evolved for warmth and this is also still the case for birds. So the problem in the cold, basically in the last few days, sadly a lot of young inexperienced birds would have perished. So basically unable to feed because the ground was frozen and this is when these bird feeders become so important. Uh, robins, blue tits, great tits, cold tits, dunnocks, etc., coming in to feed, and the mealworms in particular have been very popular. We've also got our water tray that's been frozen, so I've replaced it so they have some water to drink as well. But my first bit of really important advice is also to clean your bird feeders. Until about five years ago, I had lots of green finches, then they disappeared. And basically over the last 10 years they declined by 68 percent and probably for a period of that time it was greater than that and basically they got a parasite disease called trichomonasis from dirty bird feeders so please clean your bird feeders they now think the um, green finches are starting to recover but i'm still awaiting their return although um, my garden's getting increased numbers of visitors of goldfinches, although um, there is a concern that chaffinches are at the moment going on the decline, possibly linked to trichomonasis. So remember, clean those bird feeders. You can just hear a blue tick calling there, which are doing okay in our garden. can hear chirping house sparrow. Uh, really pleased to see them. We'll talk more about house sparrows in a minute. So just to stress, clean those bird feeders. But my second important point is um, decline of garden birds because of lack of nesting sites because of um, uh, for good environmental reasons and for um, insulation it's home improvements. We now tend to have PVC fascia boards for our guttering and it's almost impossible for birds to nest. And this has had a drastic impact on a number of garden birds. Now we've just had the, um, we've just had the uh, garden bird watch, the um, great example of citizen science and the starling I think comes in at number eight as the most common bird scene on the bird survey. There are about 1.75 million pairs in the UK but with that number it's actually dropped out of the top 10 in regard to actual numbers breeding. There's actually it's a red list species. Now red list species typically have seen a decline of over 50% over a period of 25 years. The starling actually seen a 82% decline since 1970. The house sparrow, another red list species, has seen 
a decline of 65% since 1970. You then have the amberlist species, which have seen a decline of between 25 and 50% in 25 years. And the house martin has seen a decline since 1970 of 53%. So it's right on that cusp between amber and red list. And the swift, over the last 10 years, has seen a 41% decline. And part of that problem is they've got nowhere to nest. But you can immediately make a difference. There are now a lot of companies, you can find them on various websites, who provide a whole load of nests for all those different breeding birds. It's nest boxes for starlings and house sparrows. You can have um, special swift bricks for Swiss and the nest boxes. And for the house martins, you can actually put up artificial nests. But if you're in an area where you have house martins breeding nearby, but you've got PFC fascia boards, they can't stick the mud to start building the nest. You can put up special boarding to attract the house martins. So again, this is where we can make a lot of difference with our modern um, houses to encourage breeding birds. The third topic I want to discuss is um, habitat. Now in my garden, I've got my um, privet hedge behind me here. And what's really good, I've dug out a pond. I'm very lucky at the back, I have back onto a railway. So actually um, there's almost extra cover there. So all this helps. And I want to now talk more about how important this cover is, and particularly for these bird feeders which are close to the um, privet hedge for the birds to hop from the privet hedge to feed and back into the hedge. I'm now in my back bedroom. It's like my office and looking down oh my god we've got a couple of wood pigeons feeding on the ground and the bird feeder oh just flown off there was a blue tit on the rear feeder now what's relevant about my uh, bird feeders notice where they are to the uh i've got quite a long narrow garden but i've got the privet hedge to one side and what happens the birds will come to the to feed at the bird feeders and they'll dive back into that privet hedge. That privet hedge is very important for cover. The pear tree is also quite important. You've got the uh, wood pigeon at the base of the pear tree and I find wood pigeons they just tend to fly straight into the garden and if there was a domestic cat around they might try to grab the wood pigeon and the wood pigeon would fly off. I also have more delicate collar doves which come into the garden. I can't see it at the moment but oh, something's disturbed the wood pigeons. Perhaps there was a, they've seen a cat. But what happens is the collared doves will actually land in that pear tree and then they will wait and they'll keep looking to see if the coast is clear before they would actually come down to ground level and start feeding. Now what's interesting about the uh, bird feeder here towards the rear and the privet hedge, if I come closer, about 15 years ago there was a huge commotion and there was a sparrow hawk actually on top of that hedge row with my privet hedge looking down at all the house sparrows panicking but the house sparrows are okay. They have the instinct to go from the privet hedge to the feeder and back again. They've probably never seen a sparrow hawk before, but they survive because of the cover. Now people say, ah, oh, the house sparrows have disappeared because of the sparrow hawks. Not true. There's lots of places where you have lots of sparrows and you have lots of sparrow hawks and they're both doing okay. The problem is, as I mentioned, earlier is the loss of um, places to nest on houses. 
The other thing, of course, in my back garden, if someone else um, moved... Oh, here, that's the reasons the wood pigeons flew off. It's Graham coming back from his rounds, which I showed you earlier. So it'll be quiet for a while. That's a very good example. So the wood pigeons I showed you short earlier, they had seen Graham and they flew off. So all the birds will be um, nervous for the moment until, I don't know, if Graham's going to pop back into my house or, or um, go to a neighbour. But of course, if, as I mentioned, there was a new homeowner and they got rid of this pear tree or they got rid of that privet hedge, they'd no longer be somewhere for the birds to take cover or to nest. Now in regard to those house sparrows is um, in my garden they declined for a while because they actually got rid of the um, thickets along the railway at the back. Luckily the thickets are starting to come back so the house sparrows have reappeared. And what's had a huge impact on garden birds unfortunately is the loss of the suburban hedgerow. It's the privet hedge in the front garden thanks to off-road parking we've lost vast areas of habitat where birds could stay for um, to get away from the predators and also um, to nest so it's made a huge impact on the number of breeding birds now the next thing I'd like to talk about is um, what are our most common birds? 